couple of days ago on the 25th of August 2019 Manongi Latham told me that they'd had uh, an infestation of rhinoceros beetle attacking a tree down at their house I've just looked a bit further around this is in my front garden and that pattern there of the leaves just eaten straight across is a pretty good sign that that's what the adults are doing so the species is most likely uh, the coconut rhinoceros beetle or Rictes uh, rhinoceros and they are sap feeders so they cut the leaves and uh, drink whatever juice flows into it yeah so look there across the top of the uh, leaf fronds just eaten straight away Oh, what a hassle. So at Tonga Labor in 2019, we are suffering several severe climate-related uh, problems, so climate change problems. Increased ultraviolet light, so that's damaging a lot of the trees, also causing coral bleaching on the reef top. Okay, the seawater is still cool. Uh, limited rainfall, although uh, August and July 2019 we've had a lot of rain, so that's not an issue right at this moment. High levels of salt in the wind, so that causes leaf burn. Um, we have some parasitic vine, so these are here all the time. We call this one Palapala. Pala. You've probably seen some film where I've pulled it off but it really is a parasite because it kills the host and you have to pull it off and it, it seems to have a chemical inside it that makes it resistant to fire so it's actually quite a struggle yeah just to show you about the rain this little uh, pool here usually this is dry and so just in the last few days this is um, uh, full right up and it's a favourite wallowing hole for the feral pigs. Uh, it looks like my ninita are dying, the uh, pawpaw, the papaya. Goodness me. So yeah, we're facing an awful lot of problems with our trees right now. Yeah, those um, two bits of Ninita snapped off last night. So in the strong wind. I don't know if that one's going to survive. Oh, maybe it will. Yeah. But yes, all fall down. So climate change is one problem. Insect damage is another problem. And very changeable weather patterns so this okay this is uh masina malangi and she's just done gps waypoint for this tree and what has happened is it's been attacked by the coconut rhino beetle uh, a rictes rhinoceros and we're just going to do some survey stuff You can see that um, that, that branch there. just there, but the um, the beetles have eaten mm. across the end of that from there. The obvious um, thing is the Nikau has all fallen down. Mm. Okay, we're coming back up towards the terminus building on the runway so definitely we've got some tree damage here and uh, we've got some leaf damage the other one was clearer
but you can certainly see that the ends of the fronds are impacted and then the other thing we've got is this um pala pala this parasitic vine that i was filming yesterday and here this one is morning glory and so we've got climate change two sorts of parasitic vine and we've now got the coconut rhinoceros beetle so this one is along the uh, main road coming up from the airport but again very clear damage on both of those uh, fronds. The coconut tree is quite literally the sustainer of life at Tongaleva. We use every part of the tree for some one thing or another. So having these uh, coconut rhinoceros beetles we are suddenly at very grave risk of losing our environment because we use part of the unopened fronds for our weaving our hat making the lito if these go we then have no economic reality at all because pretty much every household is involved in weaving in one form or another So I don't really know what the long-term story is going to be. Apparently the coconut rhinoceros beetle that's in the Pacific now since 2013 when they found it in Hawaii is resistant to whatever virus control they had for the last 40 odd years, 50 years in the Pacific. So all a whole new ball game. Terrible. I'm at Pahonu, up in the north of Tongaleva. It's the 10th of September 2019. I was told that there was probably some coconut rhino damage uh, to the trees here. I'll go and take a closer look, just to make sure it's not something else. So this coconut rhino beetle, or Rictes rhinoceros, this is a serious, serious problem for Tonga Labour because the coconut trees literally are the thing that sustains us. So for food and for economics. So every family weaves using the coconut fronds. But they certainly don't look healthy. I need a closer look just to sort of figure out what's going on. Whichever way you look at it, these trees are not healthy. To me, it looks as though it's coconut rhino beetle. Even if it isn't, these are all on their way out. Okay, so I've got another problem here. So this is a long-nosed, uh, long-nosed insect. I don't know if it's the from Gersma or whatever but so this one has been doing this damage so I've just pulled the thing open and that's inside there so this is a second problem and it's not the same one as the coconut rhino beetle but this is the one that's been doing the damage to the front so this sort of damage here so this is the typical damage of that other little insect so we've got two different things going on here the long-nosed beetle or long-nosed whatever sort of insect it is but just look how many trees are damaged. Okay, so that impact there, that's that long-nosed one. That's not the same sort of damage as the...
coconut rhino beetle. So a very different pattern of eating. So this will be the long-nosed um, uh, beetle. Okay, I'm over the ocean side now, behind Pahonu, up on the north coast. The long-nosed beetle, I've just come through the forest all the way across here. Everywhere, broken trees. And this is a very important seabird nesting habitat for us. That one there is the white fairy tern. But we have two species of frigate birds nesting here. We have um, some boobies. Uh, some of the boobies are ground nesters and some are tree nesters. But very important. And uninhabited habitats. So these are a real precious place for our wildlife. Okay, this tree has both impacts. Okay, that there, the straight line, that's the coconut rhino beetle. And then down here, in that frond, there, that's that long-nosed beetle. So the long-nosed beetle is actually having a worse impact because it's just causing the, uh, the fronds, the kneecow, to die and snap off. Just looking at another area of tree damage, so I'm a little bit to the east of Pahonu. You can see there, that looks mostly as though that's the long-nosed uh, insect damage. I have to leave my motor on unfortunately because it's not safe to turn it off here. So again, this is an important nesting area for two species of frigate birds, the lesser and the greater frigate birds. So we call those respectively, uh, Talakula is the lesser and Kotahar is the greater. And Tapaku as well nests here, that's the red-footed booby. So all in all, we are having some very severe forest damage. Yeah, unfortunately the waves are taking me straight over that little drop off. So you can see the trees, I'm a little bit further over now, and you can see that most of them are pretty sick in one form or another. So the white fairy terns uh, nest here, Tapaku nests here, which is the red-footed booby, uh, Noyo. Yeah, it's not very safe to stay here, so I'm going to have to move my boat. So there's definitely some coconut rhino beetle around. This section here looks to be mostly that long-nosed boring animal, the little insect. Now, one point to make very clear is that little long-nosed uh, beetle can't cause the leaf damage uh, like the coconut rhino beetle because the long-nosed beetle has just got a very long proboscis and it just tunnels its way through the soft woody tree material and it's inside just drinking the sap so it can't eat the leaves. So two very, very distinctive damage patterns. So we have several different problems. We have climate change problem, coastal erosion problem, insect problem. I'll do another one tomorrow down in the southwest of the island. I'll write one more report as a follow-up and if they don't take any notice of it, well, we're just going to have to try and find some funding and do this ourselves. I'm now west of Pahonu. There's a lotto just over behind the Nanyia there, so that low area, so it's a, a pond. Be very hot and very salty. You can see a good number of trees have fallen down on the lagoon side. And then over in the distance there, Sikilangi Passage. So that's a northwest passage there. And then I'm going to go to that little area just on the right hand side. We call that Tapanui, so I'll be there in about 20 minutes. This section is very bad, so 
the sticks were the things with no top at all that was climate change over the last couple of years this one up here that one the the far one with the yellowy fronds that's the sort of impact of ultraviolet radiation these other ones near the front these look as though they have um, some of that beetle damage down here in the foreground you've got collapsed trees we worked so hard at Hacken O'Hallalanga to replace the forest to try and keep the forest canopy and we're really hard pushed just to make any headway okay that tree over there that one with the Nico hanging down so that's either going to be the rhino beetle or the long nose beetle maybe both so even the good trees we're losing I'm at Tapu Nui, up in the northwest of the atoll. The tapuka trees, these big ones over the back, they're in really good condition. They suffered very badly in 2016 from the El Nino, but they're very nice now, so that's good. That's these trees here. So they're important nesting for the red-footed booby so they build their nest right up and then the chicks are covered in white fluffy down and they have to sit there until they can fly two chicks here in the tapuka tree one up the top right there and then the other one has a little bit more shade for the moment and the birds they sort of share sentinel duty so they keep an eye out for the frigate birds that would take the chicks so this is a very positive uh, situation at the moment so this uh, tapuka habitat the Tausunu that one over there so this is very good this is very good condition berries and it has fruit as well uh, flowers as well oh there are the flowers there those little white things and so the berries will come from these there's a moth that is associated with this tree oh there's one just fluttering around there they're sort of blue and brown with spots maybe they only can feed on a couple of trees so if you lose this habitat you inadvertently lose uh, another species now these have suffered very badly from climate change I've shown these before in different bits of film and so we've got some good and some badly affected the tapuka trees are doing very good they can get pretty big they can be up sort of 25 meters tall something like that but you can see it, that one fell down so that fell down fairly recently but we have had some strong winds so we've got strong winds very high temperatures high levels of salt in the environment uh, these coconut trees this is the that long-nosed beetle damage so burrowing down inside the Nikau stem Yeah, here and here. This little place is nice because some years ago they built this small area of rocks and so we've got a natural little marina here and people sometimes come for a weekend so when we go on holiday we'll come places like this just sort of get away from the busy life in the village where there's 150 people and you come here with maybe 10 
so it is nice but there, there, there's a few of these little shacks here so the main thing is you just bring some fresh water good fishing all across here make a little fire pit and then have a barbecue so yeah very nice coconuts fresh fish so here's a close-up of the damage on one of these fallen down fronds. And it probably came off that one.